Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. If you want a quick and easy way to prove that you're not entitled, all you gotta do is hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our first story of the day is by one stubborn lass. Entitled mother was gone for 18 years, came back, then complained because I wasn't going to give her royalties. So this is insane and I get that some won't actually believe me. Honestly, it's hard to believe at times myself due to the pure hate this woman has for me. I'm 28 year old female. My parents have always been my mom, stepmother, and dad. They didn't tell me about, let's say, Karen, not her real name, being my birth mother. She left my dad and I for another man. Honestly, after everything happened, I know why. My birth mother is a horrible, lying manipulator. My mom tried to adopt me so that I wouldn't get caught up in this senseless feud, but she refused to give over parental rights, even though she left when I was five months old and didn't dare try to contact me. My 18th birthday rolls around and I get this message from her. I didn't know who it was and I asked my parents. After a heated argument, they told me and I ended up being allowed to go meet her in a totally different state. I got to meet her and my two youngest sisters. Unfortunately, my eldest two sisters couldn't come. The first thing she said upon meeting me was, you look like your grandma. I hated her. That started off a roller coaster of six years. I found out that she told everyone I died when I was a baby that she told my sisters some pretty horrible things that weren't true about my character. Convinced my great grandma who had Alzheimer's that I stole money from her. She also went as far as claiming she never wanted me and I shouldn't have existed. When I visited, it was like she didn't want me there even though she was the one who demanded I come over to them. There's so many more things she did. A huge one was stealing things that were meant for me that my late uncle left for me. Well, I decided that I'd pray for her and just hope she'd find happiness in her life so that she didn't do this anymore. I blocked her from my Facebook. I don't have a Facebook anymore. Everything. She didn't exist anymore in my book. Jump forward to last year, I've been working on writing this novel for the longest time. Fantasy novel I've been planning out now for over a decade, and I'm finally making good progress on it. I do talk to some of the elders in the family, that side is a huge Arab Greek Orthodox family absolutely bent on keeping the family together, and they accepted me and wanted me around. And a few cousins who I thought didn't talk to her. The elders do have her on Facebook, but they don't really talk to her and have made a promise they won't tell her about me. Anyways, my cousin told her that I was writing a book, and that I was dead set on either sending it into publishers or publishing it myself by the end of 2022. She said, oh really, that's interesting. My cousin, who's never actually thought crap through, told Karen thinking it wouldn't harm anything. He came to me and said that he may have made a mistake and to be careful about responding to her. The next day, I received a message from my sister that I should unblock Karen because something bad happened. Not really connecting the two, I unblocked her. She messaged me stating, well, since you stole grandma's money, I'm going to sue you for every penny you get from that book. I said, Karen, you do need proof about that accusation. I didn't steal anything. To be honest, I don't know where you got the idea from, but I wouldn't do that. I was taught better than that. She replied, yes, you did, and I'll make sure to get that back. I said, Karen, she's passed away. I have nothing to do with great grandma's missing money if there is any. Plus, how will you sue me for a book I've yet to publish that'll be under a pseudonym anyways? Are you just going to randomly sue me? I'm unsure where you think I have the money seeing as how I'm on disability. I mean, why don't you use the money you stole from my trust fund grandpa set up for me? She replied, I have proof that you're a liar and a cheat. You're not disabled. Plus, I have no idea what you're talking about with the trust fund. I reply, Grandpa told Dad and Uncle Danny about the fact Grandpa set aside one for each of us and made you the beneficiary in our stead. She replied, that's a lie. I said, you know, I've left you alone. According to you, I don't exist. I never try to use you on my college applications. I never included you in my memorable moments because you demanded I act like you don't exist. So you can take my trust fund and your fake memories and go away. You'll never see a dime. She replied, you owe me. I'm your mother. I reply, you should have been aborted. It's not like you have anyone who really wants you. Karen replies, what? I say, you were never my daughter, nor were you my friend, until you realize that, don't talk to me. Karen replies, I don't understand. I say, you told me these things. You're right, you're not my mother, so goodbye. Yeah, I haven't heard from Karen since, so maybe that taught her. I don't know, I just feel bad she has this much hate for someone who's her flesh and bones. 
Guess you shouldn't have kicked away your kid who loves to ride. That may be your downfall. Like I tell my friends, your words and actions can and will be used in one of my books, and it may not be to glorify you. I'm gonna be honest, hearing about this Karen makes me think of people that I've had in my life who have done honestly kind of similar things, and it genuinely frustrates me to my core. It's nothing personally that involved my parents, but some of these things, like, I can just relate to. Do you guys agree that the best thing here is to just never acknowledge them again? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is by Moonlight Maroon. Mother-in-law doesn't know when to quit. My mother-in-law and I don't get along. I've tried for the sake of my husband, but this last incident was the end of the line for me. My mother-in-law has always had this overprotective aspect about her when it came to her kids, which has significantly grown worse with time. Her reasoning behind this behavior is because she felt her mother always took the side of her significant other, and so she vowed to only care about her children and not their partners. That didn't bother me initially. I figured if I was on her good side, nothing to really worry about. Until you realize this woman doesn't have a good side. She would say rude comments to all her children's significant others. She would always gossip about my sister-in-law's boyfriend, saying he was a drunk and always took her daughter's money, even though her daughter didn't have a job, and the boyfriend would be the one paying for the apartment her daughter lived in and all of her clothes and food. She hated my brother-in-law's now ex-girlfriend because she was Chinese. She would state things like she's dirty and gross and, wait for it, gave me the coronavirus. I have no doubt in my mind that mother-in-law is part of the reason why they ended up breaking up. I never once saw my brother-in-law stand up to his mom regarding any rude comments she ever said about his girlfriend. He would simply turn away and ask everyone else to handle her. Like, really dude? I never understood her thought process because the things that she would come up with would be outright delusional. It was only a matter of time before that crazy would make its way towards me and boy did it. When we were at her house, she blew up one night because I wasn't doing anything. I didn't help clean up or anything, but neither did anyone else. Apparently, I needed to clean off the dinner table and wash the dishes for seven people while at her house. Even my brother-in-law agreed, even though he will literally sit on his phone the entire time while everyone else does prep work or cleans. So the next night, I did it, even though my husband protested against it because I was a guest at her house. She would be in these weird moods where she wouldn't even acknowledge me when we came over. She just went straight to hugging my husband and saying how much she missed him while giving me a who's this witch look. My husband would sometimes force me to initiate the hello and hug, but it came to the point where it was like, why should I when she doesn't like me? It started to get worse when I did something, even while at my own home, mind you. She would flip out and start yelling and all of them would need to calm her down. When she would be at our house, she apparently would expect to be treated with the utmost respect, which is where my petty butt came back with a no. You do not get to be disrespectful or callous to me in my own home. The icing on the cake is when my mom was with us and we stopped by to say goodbye before heading out. She was talking to my mom, asking my mother all of these weird questions about her name and everything. She took pictures with my mom and then she looked at me and then snapped. She started going off about how I'm the reason her family has so many problems. She's been through heck because she hasn't been able to see her son for so long. I was in utter shock. I didn't know what to say. I simply looked at my husband like, what the freak is going on? Then she gets up in my mother's face, asking her a bunch of questions about why we got married, telling my mom that I take money from them and my husband, that she sees me taking away money from my husband and that I'm a bad person. My mother didn't say a darn word, but my heart sank when she started to cry. Because my mom had gone through heck and back with an evil, vindictive mother-in-law for her 35 years of marriage to my dad. My husband defended me and my mom, even with my mother-in-law screaming at me that she was going to call the police on me and put me in jail. He tried to talk to his mom about her behavior and that it was unacceptable, but she refuses to apologize and believes she did no wrong. Her whole reasoning for snapping like that is because her friends told her that women will sometimes marry men and have them kidnapped and killed to take their benefits. She does not think my mother is my real mom and that she's helping me in the process of killing my husband. At this point, I'm convinced my mother-in-law belongs in a mental institution. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law believe that my mother-in-law did no wrong and that she had every right to behave that way. They keep telling my husband that this is your family and that he should put them first before me. 
I told my husband that because of how disrespectful she was, I do not want her at our house anymore. If he would like to go spend time with his family, he can freely do so by going to visit them. Is it wrong of me for being tired of being treated like I'm disposable to my in-laws? For asking for something as simple as common decency? I've never acted out or caused a scene in front of them. I've done so much for these people and they don't see it. Till this day, I'm excluded from the family circle because I refuse to stand for this when behavior is rude and condescending. I think OP has every justification to feel the way they do, and I think OP is more than right to deny access to their home to this mother-in-law, and I sure hope the husband gets their head out of their butt and realizes being a mama boy in this situation is not okay. Your wife is being accused of trying to kill you for your money and that their mom is a secret agent working along with the scheme. If they can't look past that and realize how wrong this whole thing is, is there really any saving this? Our next story is by Willingness Long 9514 Entitled mother gets mad at me after I slapped her son for looking up my skirt. So I, 16-year-old female, was walking at a park near my house. Since it was finally starting to warm up, I decided to wear a skirt for the first time since like October. So I passed the playground, and as I was walking away, I hear someone running up behind me. As I'm walking, out of the corner of my eye, I see two hands grab the sides of my skirt and lift it completely, exposing my underwear. As soon as this happens, I turn around and without hesitation backhand the person holding my skirt. Then I realize it was some kid who looked to be 10 or 11. He looked pretty shocked that I slapped him, but before I could ask him what the heck, this kid's mom, who we'll call Karen, comes running out of nowhere and slaps me across the face and starts yelling at me. The conversation went like this. Karen said, how dare you? I said, ow, what the heck? She says, don't ever dare touch my baby. I say, how about you teach your baby to not be a perv? Karen slaps me again and says, don't you ever talk to me or my son like that. He's just being curious. Boys will be boys. I say, ow, it's not being curious, it's sexual assault. Karen says, maybe if you weren't dressed so provocatively. I was just wearing a skirt that was one hand above my knee and a t-shirt. He wouldn't get so curious. I say, maybe if you taught your crotch goblin how to respect women, he wouldn't be looking up skirts. Karen says, where's your parents? I doubt they let you leave the house looking so promiscuous. I said, yeah, I think that's what my parents would get mad about. The way I'm dressed and not that your son lifted my skirt. With that, Karen got her son and left saying, let's leave. We don't talk to promiscuous girls like her. And so I flipped her off as we both walked away. I wish there was a more satisfying ending to this, but unfortunately, that's just how life goes. Now, I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but I feel like kids who go and do things like this, aren't they more likely to have been exposed to some kind of, let's just say, negative actions prior in life to be going around doing stuff like that? Either way, it's horrendous that this Karen was trying to defend their child doing that. Like, literally, how far gone do you have to be as a person to willingly defend your kid who goes and does that to somebody? Our next story is by Nobody X in X Particular. My dad is forcing me to either quit my job or to half my hours, yet refuses to support me financially despite the fact that I'm a minor. Is this normal? For reference, I'm 17 and I'm in school full time 5 days a week. I work 12 to 8 on the weekends and haven't had a day off other than for COVID leave since August. Of course, my 7 day week schedule isn't ideal, but I really appreciate the income and have grown to like my job. Last summer, I really struggled to find myself a job. I was 16 and after dropping in and emailing 40 different employers and revising my CV about a million times, I lost all hope. My parents decided that I was old enough to support myself and cut me off financially and stopped giving me bus money or lifts. I live in the countryside, about 20 kilometers away from all my friends, so I spent the summer completely alone which was really difficult for me. All of my employed friends had gotten their jobs through their parents or friends of their parents, but my parents still made no effort to put in a personal word on my behalf to any employers they were on friendly terms with. Anyways, August rolled around and I finally got a job at a McDonald's about a half hour drive from me after four months in isolation. My parents immediately turned their noses up at the mention of McDonald's, but I wasn't in any position to be picky and I'm still very grateful for the job. They've always put massive pressure on me to do well in school, and so, to please them, 
I've been overexerting myself for months and have a long streak of A's and B's. Unfortunately, I miss a day or two of school on average a month because of my period. For years, I've spent once a month paralyzed with cramps and nausea, which are a million times worse than what any other girl I've talked to about this has ever experienced. I'm convinced I have endometriosis and have brought the subject up with my parents again and again over the years and have begged them for a hospital appointment. Four years later, I still haven't seen anybody about my period pains and I still continue to miss school over it. Despite this, my parents are constantly on my back about the days that I've missed at school and yet neglect to get me any sort of help or treatment for what I'm going through. About two months ago, I missed a week of school because I was sure I had COVID, when in actuality, I just had a bad dose of tonsillitis. My parents were furious when I tested negative for COVID and nagged and argued with me about it for another month until I actually did test positive and ended up missing another full week of school. I've since caught up on all the work I missed and I haven't broken my streak of A's and B's. Today and yesterday, I stayed home from school because I've had another bout of tonsillitis, which went untreated last time and this time as well. Apparently, this was a breaking point for my dad and he called me down from my room and told me if I didn't either quit my job or drop down to one day a week, he was going to go into my manager's office and withdraw his parental consent himself. He blamed my illness on work and told me that it was unacceptable that I was missing school and told me that I needed to take a day off to dedicate wholly to study. I tried to reason with him and showed him my report cards and recent test results and told him my grades were perfect and that I couldn't be blamed for catching COVID or tonsillitis. He shut me down and told me that my grades didn't matter because the fact remained that I was still missing school. I'm unsure what to do or how to change my dad's mind. I know a 7 day week is extreme for someone my age, but I have no other option. In order to see my friends and do nice things in the city outside of school, I need funds. In order to have funds, I need a job. My parents want me to have both a school life and a social life, but won't give me a single cent out of their pocket to get me out of my countryside jail cell. Pocket money's out of the question. I've tried to negotiate my way into making some kind of deal with them by doing good in school and doing any chores my parents ask of me, but their argument is that I shouldn't be rewarded for doing the bare minimum of what's expected of me. Now that I have my own job, I'm financially independent and can no longer be guilt-tripped by them about money or by my laziness. I'm currently saving for a month-long holiday during the summer, and I already have deposits laid down and plane tickets bought. Still, I need to earn a little extra money to pay the entire thing off. It's my reward to myself for the effort I've put in at school and for all the hours I've worked. I really want to do something nice for myself before I hunker down and inevitably quit my job for my final year at school next year. For me, my job allows me to actually do nice things for myself and to see my friends. Quitting it or slicing my income in half is not an option. Without it, my parents have made it very clear that they would not support me or give me any kind of pocket money to get a bus to see my friends or to treat myself. I've proved to my parents time and time again that I can excel in school, take care of my physical and mental health, see my friends, and simultaneously work, but they're still not satisfied. I'm very frustrated by this whole situation as I'm an only child who's fortunate to have two working parents who are married happily. Still, it often bothers me that I have friends with five siblings and a single mother who have better financial support than me. Of course, I know people's financial situations are not nearly as straightforward as that, and I don't mean to sound spoiled, but it's frustrating for me, and I wish my life could be different. What can I do? Am I being a jerk by not obeying them? Is this fair? This is definitely not a fair situation for OP. They're giving them literally no recourse to have access to a social life. I'm really not sure what is the best route for OP. I mean, you can sit them down and try to explain to them as honestly and as passionately as you can why you need to continue this job or get some kind of support from them because it's not like OP can just conjure money up to do things. And they're already doing well in school and it's not like that's much of a life being stuck inside their house all day studying. All I know is when OP has that situation settled where they can get out of there and they leave as soon as possible, they shouldn't be too surprised that OP got out of there and got out of there fast. 
I hope Opie's a bigger person than me because I'd be pretty vindictive against my parents for that. Our next story is by KitKat4. Found out my mom put me on diet pills at the age of 10. I wasn't sure I was going to post this anywhere at first, but I've been too baffled by the entire situation to not post this. This took place over many years, and I'm still facing the repercussions of my mom doing this even now. I'm 18 now, so the story took place over a few years. Since it was so long ago, I don't remember many specific details, but I'll try my best to make sure the story is accurate to how I remember it happening. When I was 10 years old, I was taken to the doctor who claimed that I was overweight and at risk of diabetes. My family has a high risk of diabetes, and I was only at high risk for diabetes because my family members had it. I was a little bit chubbier than kids my age, but it was mostly because I hadn't reached my full height yet. My family put me on many diets, which as a child was absolutely horrible. Growing up with the constant expectation of losing weight has put so much strain on my mental health and I'm currently in eating disorder recovery, which my family is not understanding at all. A little while later, I was diagnosed with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which can have an effect on having children and many other health issues. My doctors told me that if I exercised and ate healthy every day, then I would have a normal period. Keep in mind, I was about 10 or 11 at this time, and they were worried about me not having a menstrual cycle. For our non-menstruating readers, this is not normal. People who menstruate typically start menstruating at about 12 or later. So in order to simulate and give me a regular period and help me lose weight, they put me on a medication that would increase insulin production and female hormones in my body to help me have a regular period. Although this was working for a short while, eventually my body got used to having a period and it stopped giving me a normal cycle. I had lost so much weight due to the diet and exercise that it was unhealthy, but the doctors were still upset that I wasn't having a period. At this time I was 16 so this was a fairly normal concern. They put me on another medication as well. This medication I do remember the name of, it was spironolactone. This medicine forced my body to stop producing testosterone altogether and caused me to have an extremely long cycle that lasted for almost 20 days. I went in to get my blood tested after that and they found out I had a hemoglobin level, or the amount of iron in my blood, of about 3. Normal levels are between 6 and 12. After this event, it was doctor after doctor. I should know that my weight at this time was its lowest because I was missing and losing so much blood on the daily. The next few years, I was put on birth control to manage my cycle so that I won't end up in the hospital again and recently got an arm implant of my medication so that I won't forget to take it. If I did that, I could end up in the hospital and since I'm at college, I'll be less likely to be able to contact my parents if anything happens. Now here's where the entitlement comes in. During this entire thing, and my recovery gaining back the blood I'd lost, I saw significant weight gain. At one point during this, my mom made me keep a log of how much I weighed each day, and scolded me whenever I had too much of any food she deemed bad. Basically anything that wasn't vegetables. Every time I eat in front of her, she asks me about what I ate. I'm afraid to answer honestly because I don't want to be shamed for eating what I need to survive. My mom still thinks I should be at the weight I was when I was missing half my blood and has had little to no concern about my mental state throughout all of this. She even likes to pretend that she was a victim in all of this, often saying things like, I regret ever putting you on those meds, but in actuality, she knew what the pill would have done. She knew it was a diet pill and I was only 10. I didn't really get a say in my medical care and I didn't really understand what was going on. I have many other stories about my mom being entitled, homophobic, and transphobic, but this is all I have the energy to post about for now. You can't hear the story and not feel bad for OP. Just imagine being a 10 year old kid and being fed pills by your own mother, not knowing what's going on, that just essentially like really scrambles up your entire body's function and leaves you going to these doctors that also seem to not understand what the heck is even going on here. I know this is a very difficult situation for OP, and I wish them the best, but I also hope that they break free from their mom's grasp of having like, okay, tell me what you weigh every single day and what you ate. In no way is that ever going to promote any kind of healthy relationship, either with the food or how you feel about yourself, and also just between you and your mom. It's just insane. And our final story of the day is by Salvin Days. 
aunt entitled mother demands I give her my YouTube channel. First and foremost, I will not be giving you the name of my YouTube channel. I'm not here to plug my channel, but to share a story relating to it. Second, this is a part two to another story I've told on this Reddit page about two years ago. To summarize, my aunt wanted me to upload her son's, my cousin's, video to my channel, which I tried politely telling her no, but she didn't like that response and made a scene about it. Two years later, I've returned to give you guys another story relating to my entitled aunt, which I've been waiting to share. With that being said, let's get into what happened. So at this point, I'm at about 6,000 subscribers and things are going great for me on YouTube. People are enjoying my content. Since that interaction two years ago, my aunt hadn't really brought up my channel or asked me anything relating to it since. I had seen her a few times the past two years, but we hadn't really interacted that much. Just a casual hi here and there. However, about a week ago, my cousin, who's well aware of my YouTube channel, decided one day to Google search me and ended up finding my Reddit user and from that, had found the post I made two years ago about my aunt, his mom. Now he's 13 years old, so I don't really blame him for this, but of course he ended up showing that post to his mom, and she did not like it one bit. Later that day, I get a call, and this is how the conversation basically went. I said hello? Aunt Entitled Mother said, hey, I just had a question for you. I say, sure, what's up? She says, so my son found this post online about two years ago, and he says you made it, which talks about that time I asked you to upload his video to your YouTube channel. Me, a little nervous because I never thought she'd see it, said, Oh, yeah, um, I'm sorry. I just didn't think you'd ever see that. I could delete it if you want. She says, Yeah, you need to delete that. That just seems very inappropriate. Considering it was a private conversation, what made you think you could do that? Me, a little annoyed at that, said, Well, aunt entitled mother, you did sort of cross a line when you tried to push that on me, especially when I told you no. She says, That's no excuse. I think this YouTube channel thing is going to your head. I say, going to my head? What do you mean? She says, I think it's making you act irrationally and mean. I don't think you should keep doing it anymore. I say, no offense, aunt entitled mother, but we haven't really spoken. You don't know how I am or what I do. She says, well, after making a post like that, I can't say it's making you a kind person. I think maybe you need to hand over your login information for YouTube so I can delete that post. At that point, I realized she was confusing Reddit and YouTube as being the same platform. I said, Aunt Entitled Mother, that post was made on Reddit. It wasn't posted on YouTube. She says, well, I need to log in for both of them. Quite frankly, you shouldn't be on either. I say, that's not gonna happen. You do realize I'm 23, right? Why do you even want my channel? She says, you act like I haven't seen the videos you've posted. They're very inappropriate. This is very immature for someone your age. I'll make it easy and delete it for you. I say, do you hear yourself? That's not gonna happen. I don't need your approval. Aunt Entitled Mother, thinking she can scare me, says, you know, I could always just email these websites to have you taken off. I say, that won't work. She says, oh, I know it'll work. So just do me a favor and make this easier on yourself. I don't wanna have to get your mother involved. Me, very annoyed at this point, said, You know, Aunt Entitled Mother, just do what you gotta do. I'm done with this conversation. She says, oh, I intend to, so watch out. I say, yeah, sure, bye. After I hung up, the first thing Aunt Entitled Mother did was call my mom, telling her that I was a menace and a delinquent and that this YouTube channel was messing with my head. And from what my mom told me later on, she told Aunt Entitled Mother that she was delusional and out of line. Not sure if Reddit or r slash entitled parents or YouTube received any complaints, but that post I made two years ago is still up and I haven't received any issues. I haven't spoken to Aunt Entitled Mother at all since that interaction, so I'm hoping that was the end of that. It might be petty to be making this post and running the risk of her seeing it, but regardless, I wanted to share it with you guys. What I love about this entitled aunt is they're so out of touch with how the internet works, they don't realize that the story about them, they're completely anonymous in. There's in no way anybody that's going to be able to see this and be like, oh yeah, that's Carol from so-and-so's family, that's that's so-and-so's aunt. 
She's also the embodiment of all those adults that were like sticklers for the rules as kids that for some reason we've all experienced who were always like, well, I'm going to report you to so-and-so. While all the kids knew that nothing was going to happen at all and they have no power over anybody. You're going to complain to YouTube? Go ahead. You want me to tweet at Susan Wojcicki for you? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.